So a traditional cedar gate goes up and down, right? Today we're gonna to show you how to build a horizontal gate where the pickets are going horizontally, like this one. There's a lot more to it than you think. Let us show you. So what we need to do is we need to cut three rails, one, two, and three. They're all 48 inches. We are using rough cut two by four cedar stringers. Rough cut so they're just a little bit thicker all the way around. So they're better than the other ones. Yep, that's cedar all right, it smells like it. If you're gonna use a circular saw for a project like this, make sure that you don't put your foot right where you wanna cut. So as a traditional gate for like a six foot vertical fence, you would have three stringers and we're still gonna have three on this. On this gate, we're gonna have one at the very top, we're gonna have one at the very bottom, and we're gonna have one offset from the center. Why are we gonna offset it? Because if we put it in the center, that's gonna be right in our air gap. We basically wanna hide this from the outside so you can't see it through that air gap. So we're gonna offset that two by four just by a little bit. Now if we do this right, we should be able to actually go ahead and just hang this gate the way it is, and then after it's hung, trim the ends off. We want this bottom two by four just to be behind this bottom picket somewhere. I went about an inch down past it. We measured down from the top of the post, an inch past the top of that picket, and that is where we chose to put our two by four. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yep, center's right there. We're gonna offset up so our latch is just a little bit higher. Nobody wants to bend down to open their gate. Also, another factor is if you have kids, probably want that latch just a little bit taller. 25 there. 25 there. So now, because it is a horizontal fence, what do we need to do? We can't install our pickets horizontally. We need to be able to nail it here in the air somehow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut another fill piece and run it from here to here. Hey, there you go. We're gonna bring it an inch in because all this hardware that sticks out, that thickness, the bolts there that you're gonna add and then the bolts on the latch, we wanna be able to give ourselves enough clearance to be able to clear all that stuff. That's a half an inch. The bolts are gonna add another quarter and I'm just gonna add myself another quarter of an inch to be double sure. Okay, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do, I was actually gonna measure for pickets we can do that, but we also need to go ahead and measure out our diagonal brace. Now, what direction is the brace gonna go? The brace, it's gonna hinge off of this post and it's gonna latch to that one. This is gonna be what they call a compression brace. I'm not gonna get into a whole bunch of detail about it, but make sure and see this video over here if you wanna go ahead and check out why we're gonna use a compression brace and not a tension brace. We wanna make sure to go from corner to corner. We're just gonna go ahead and trace the lines, bottom, on top. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and nail our pickets across here, and then we'll also nail into that brace as well. So it strengthens the brace, and the brace also strengthens the gate. Keeps the gate from wanting to sag and fall towards the ground. So for our pickets, what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from not all the way to that picket, this little half inch right here, we're gonna cut that off. So we're gonna measure from that fill piece that we cut in, that we put in there, all the way to that other fill piece, which is gonna be 46 and 5 eighths. Just to guess, I think we're gonna want 10 of them. Through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yep, definitely 10. Okay. So I got a lot of explaining to do. I did some things and we just wanna go ahead and before we just put the pickets on, just go ahead and tell you exactly what everything is. We put this piece on here, and we put this piece on here. Why did we do that? Thank you, Andrew. That's exactly why we did that, because our hinges have to go somewhere structural. You need those lag bolts of the hinge to go into some solid wood. So that's where this comes into play and that's where this little, this little big guy, that's where that, comes into play. If we went in the very top one, it wouldn't look so good. 
and we'd barely even catch that two by four. So we wanted to go in here and bring it down, put a hinge in this one, put a hinge in that one to make everything look symmetrical. Now, before I get caught up in the rest of this video, if, uh, if you happen to just so be noticing, you know, I don't know, said shirt about fencing not being a spectator sport, that is 100% true because we do it as a team. Now, if you feel like you need a shirt like this, see the link below. We're gonna nail that brace as we go down. So we are using a picket as a spacer because if you go 60 and a half inches tall and you go with 10 pickets and then a half inch air gap, everything works out to the point where you don't have to cut anything. Assuming your pickets are five and a half inches wide and nine sixteenths inches thick. Okay, to make a long story short, there you go. We have one more problem. Because it is horizontal, there's a lot of trimming to do with this in order to put a gate in. Because we did a cover plate here, our planes are incorrect. So we come across this just fine, but now we have a gap here. We need to cut another cover plate and put it on the gate so that our hinge is on the same plane. Now here, we just decided to go ahead and use the tops of the dog-eared pickets to give it just a little bit of character. Pizzazz. Pizzazz, big word. We're gonna go ahead and pre-drill that one hinge, the top hinge there. We were having a discussion about what we're gonna do with the middle hole and the postmaster post. We will drill a hole through the postmaster post and put a black carriage bolt through this hole into that post. And we're in Wyoming and it's really dry. Uh, we like to pre-drill all of our cedars so we don't split it out. There you go, there's that post right there. We're actually gonna go that direction. These are 5 16 by two and a half inch bolts. Make sure the hinge pins are going up so gravity pulls them down so they don't fall out. Yeah, it works! So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and see how very carefully I can trim. So you don't need it all the time, but when you need the Sawzall, it's pretty handy. See right now, it's kind of ugly. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing on there. So this latch, we're gonna put the latch so that this hits in the center of this two by four. Now this is a paddle latch. You have to lift up on it to get it to open. It is reversible. All you have to do is take that screw out, undo the spring, and you can flip it around. You need to have a handle on it at all times. <laughs> so there's something still here that we gotta explain. This right here is the main fence. This right here is a trim picket. It's hiding all the, all the fasteners and making it beautiful. If this was the continuing fence, which you don't see here, you would have another layer of a picket. If that picket were to go all the way down, that striker now can't latch in that latch. So what we typically do is we'll take a full picket and we'll just notch out that little striker right there. That would then be our trim plate to cover up all that ugliness back there and to make it awesome and beautiful. A cable brace. There's, uh, Anti-sag brace, anti-sag cable, anti-sag anti -sag kit. 
It's gonna go the opposite of a compression brace. It's gonna go from here to here. And if you want to see how that gets put on, make sure and see the video right over here. Okay, the gate is done. It's awesome. It's, woo, yay, cool, so exciting. Brand new gate, yeah. As you can see, it opens 180 degrees. If you're gonna hang a gate, make sure to hang it off of the existing fence. The gate should never drag on the ground. And also, always, 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 always hang that gate off the low side. If you hang it off the high side, it's gonna drag into the ground and you're gonna have to start excavating ground out. If you guys are interested to see how we build the fence, not the gate, but the fence, make sure and see that video, it's right here. Dan with SWI and Andrew. We are Wyoming's Fence Company and you have a good dang day.